it's a big world out there with plenty to do and explore. And there are a lot of big problems facing us right now, like pollution and global warming. Now is the time that we all should get together to help solve these problems. So where do we start? Well, the first step is learning all we can about the problems facing the Earth. And then figuring out ways to help solve them. We call that exploring. Right now we're going to explore hydroelectric, hydroelectric power. power. Hydroelectric power is defined as the generation of electricity by flowing water. Hydroelectric power is made by harnessing the weight of water as it falls and converting that physical energy into electrical energy. Water power is nothing new. For nearly 2,000 years now, humans have been using the power of falling water as a tool. The Greeks built water wheels to grind wheat into flour. In the 1700s, hydropower was used to mill lumber and to pump water for irrigation. But it wasn't until 1882 that water power was used to make electricity. That was when a paper manufacturer named H.J. Rogers built the world's first hydroelectric power plant when he built a dam through the Fox River near Appleton, Wisconsin. The Appleton Edison Light Company began generating electricity on September 30, 1882 producing 12 and a half kilowatts, enough electricity to power the 250 lights in Roger's home, his paper plant, and a nearby building. But it wasn't until an Ohio native named Lester Allen Pelton invented a super efficient water turbine that hydroelectric power became economically feasible. In 1889, Pelton devised the Pelton wheel quite by accident. Instead of using flat paddles that were common on water wheels, Pelton attached cups to the wheel and discovered that his turbine became 90.2% efficient, 14% more efficient than other water wheels of the period. His accidental invention meant that dams could now generate more power more efficiently and earned Lester Pelton the title, the father of hydroelectric power. Within 20 years, roughly 300 hydroelectric plants were built around the world. By 1900, 40% of the United States electricity was hydroelectric. Hydroelectric power is literally pollution free with an inexhaustible supply of fuel as long as water keeps flowing. But that means hydroelectric power is only available where there is an abundant supply of running water. That's one of the reasons why today, dams supply only around 10% of America's electrical energy. For more than a century now, it's been cheaper and more reliable to make electricity by burning fossil fuels, either oil, coal, or natural gas. There were plenty of those natural resources under the ground, and it was a lot easier to dig them up and bring them to a power plant than to dam a river and build the power plant there. But fossil fuels are a non-renewable resource, which means they're nearly impossible to replace once they're used up, and they generate pollution when they're burned. Lately, fossil fuels have become more difficult and expensive to find, and we have polluted the atmosphere by using them. Energy companies are now looking for more eco-friendly, affordable, and renewable sources of energy that's called green power and includes wind, solar, geothermal, and hydroelectric sources of energy. This is the Sydney A. Murray Hydroelectric Station on the Mississippi River in Louisiana. It's one of the newest and the largest prefabricated power plants in the world. Up to 170,000 cubic feet of water per second flows through the station's eight massive hydraulic turbines, generating 192 megawatts of power. So how exactly does flowing water make electricity? There are seven basic elements to a hydroelectric plant. The dam. Most hydroelectric plants need a dam to hold back water in a large reservoir. The intake. These are gates that open so gravity can pull water through the dam.
the turbine. Water rushing through a dam turns large blades on the turbine, which is attached to the generator. As the turbine blades turn, the generator makes electricity. The transformer takes the power made by the generator and converts it to a higher voltage current. The power lines coming from the plant move electricity into the grid, which eventually brings it to your home or school. Finally, the outflow. This is where the water flowing through the dam re-enters the river downstream. It takes a lot of water pressure to spin turbine blades fast enough to generate electricity. That's where the dam comes in. The dam is designed to trap water upstream and form what is called a reservoir. This man-made lake can hold large amounts of water until it is needed. Reservoirs can also be used for fishing, swimming, and boating and can store water until it is sent to irrigate crops or go to a city where people can use it. But for a hydroelectric dam, the reservoir simply holds water until it's needed by the electric plant. Dams may look like they are a solid piece of concrete, but many have tunnels and passageways built inside. Called galleries, these passageways are there so engineers and technicians can monitor and repair any number of pipes and valves running through the dam. That's correct. Some people think a dam is just a big hunk of concrete, and it is a large piece of concrete, but it also has galleries in it which uh, are considered like tunnels. You can go into that and, and there are different things that you can access in those galleries that we physically maintenance-wise go and look at and verify that everything in the facility is working. The gallery is typically the, the area of the operating floor where you can go out and access the units, the generators or turbines from the gallery which is accessible by people. There's no water flow in the gallery. So there are a lot of different functions in a, in a dam that you don't see from the outside. We have intake gates, which lets the water go into a type of pin stock, again, a delivery device to let the water get to the generator. In a traditional hydroelectric plant, where you have pin stocks flowing water from a reservoir, that pin stock is an individual pipe running to an individual unit, supplying water from its reservoir. Because pen stocks confine and direct the water's flow as gravity forces it down through the dam, much like a hose, the pen stocks can efficiently deliver water to the turbine. You can demonstrate how by conducting this simple home experiment. This plastic beach toy consists of a funnel-shaped top, which sits above two small water wheels. Think of it as a model of a hydroelectric dam. First, remove the funnel and pour water over the top of the toy. Notice the water is widely dispersed. Not much of it hits the water wheels. It's also not under much pressure, so the wheels don't spin very fast. Now, replace the funnel. Think of it as the penstock inside a dam, and the water wheels as the turbine. When you pour water into the funnel, it's designed to direct the water right to the top of the water wheels and make them turn. The funnel, like penstocks in a dam, confines the water flow. The water builds up pressure inside the funnel, which aims the water directly on the water wheels. The water under pressure spins the wheels more efficiently, like water would spin a turbine inside a dam. A hydroelectric dam works on pretty much the same principle. Electricity is generated when the water rushing through the penstocks is directed into the turbine in the dam's powerhouse. Inside the turbine, there is a large water wheel that spins with the force of the water rushing through it. As the blades turn, the turbine spins a shaft that is connected to an electrical generator. Once the shaft inside the generator is spinning, a hydroelectric plant works just like any other electric generating plant. The shaft spins a coiled copper wire cylinder around very large magnets at very high speeds. It is the copper wire spinning around magnets inside a generator that makes electricity. It has a, a rotating element, which is called the rotor, and it has a stator, which is a, the windings of the generator, which are, are stationary. And as the rotor turns, which is what is attached to the propeller, the turbine blades causing that rotational movement, it creates an electrical potential magnetic force, which is the electricity being generated. 
and then we excite it with a static exciter which applies voltage to the rotor and in turn when you apply voltage to the rotor the energy from the water turned in the generator will produce voltage. Magnets plus copper wire plus motion equals electric current. It's, it's similar to all conventional electricity being generated using a turbine, whether it be a steam-driven turbine or a wind-driven turbine. There's rotational energy turning a generator creating the electricity. We just use water as the driving force. The amount of electricity a hydroelectric plant can generate is determined by three things. The volume of water passing through the dam, the height from the surface of the reservoir to the turbines, and the number of generators in the plant. The greater the flow and the height between the reservoir and turbine, known as the head, the more electricity a generator can produce. The Sydney A. Murray plant on the Mississippi River has eight generators and produces 192 megawatts of power. This is Calderwood Dam on the Little Tennessee River. It's an older concrete arch dam built in 1930. There are three turbines in its powerhouse that generate 121 and a half megawatts of power. The world's largest hydroelectric plants can have 24 or more turbines spread over several powerhouses and generate up to 14,000 megawatts of electricity. From the generators, electricity is then sent to nearby transformers, which take the power and turn it into just the right current to send out over transmission lines that carry the electricity to homes, schools, and businesses that may be many miles away. Environmentally, it's, it's very friendly. There's, there's no discharges associated with the power plant. Like in fossil fuel boilers, there's no stack emissions, there's no fuel being consumed. It uses water, which is a clean source of power. And then we discharge the water right back into the system. But it, it's replenished with rain over time, and of course it varies from year to year depending on how much rain, how much power we can make. But it's a renewable energy, uh, carbon free, and low environmental impact. And you know, we don't use any of it up. It's just, you use it and pass it on. And then again, we do not pollute. There's no pollutant in that. Uh, we do not put out any environmentally bad eels. The advantage of a hydroelectric plant is no fossil fuels burned to make electricity. So the power it produces is pollution free. As long as water flows to the dam, green power is produced. The disadvantage, hydroelectric dams are very expensive to build and it's very difficult to get permission to build them since dams have a large impact on the environment. They cost a lot to build. Today, this facility was built in 1929 to 32. Today, it would be a massive you know, cost. It is a large undertaking today. Even we, we have to acquire a license through the FERC, which is the federal regulations and uh, that is sometimes difficult because of all of the, the people that you need to satisfy in the world, which, you know, some of them want to let the water run all the time, some of them want to fish all the time, so that's, that's a negative is trying to get, and then the environmental impact, you have to do a whole lot of digging and you will change the structure and you also will flood a lot of land, which today people don't like their land flooding. Nevertheless, the 20th century was the most active period of dam building the world has ever known. Today, there are about 80,000 dams in the United States alone, but only 3% of them generate electricity. Just think, if they all produce power, would we really need to rely on so many fossil fuels? When you look to the future of the availability of fossil fuels, petroleum products, it should be expanded and become a greater percentage because it is a renewable resource. The environmental impact is so much less that it's important to expand hydroelectric power versus the other technologies that's going to consume a resource that has a finite end to it. That's just one question facing planners in the future. Should we upgrade existing dams to make more electricity or look for other ways to produce green power? I think there's an opportunity to expand hydroelectric power in the, in the United States, especially there are a lot of undeveloped sites that have potential for hydroelectric. 
as well as dams that are located on existing rivers that do not currently produce electricity. So that I believe there's opportunity there to take advantage of the existing water flow to use it to generate electricity. There's always going to be a need for electricity and especially environmental friendly developed electricity, which dams are, hydro facilities are that. It's something to think about the next time you turn on a light switch and wonder where all that electricity comes from. You know, there's still a lot more to learn about the world and what makes it go around. And it's never too late to explore. You might be surprised about all you can learn. Until next time, I'm Michael. And I'm Andrea. See ya. Out, Out there exploring. exploring.